I'd like to talk to you about the real reason why we need magnesium. Now, most people know that magnesium is good for leg cramps. It's good for stress relaxation. It's good to help you sleep. It has anti-inflammatory properties. So if they have sore muscles, they'll, they might take some magnesium. They might even know that it supports healthy blood sugars and that it is one of the main electrolytes to keep the heart in rhythm. And it works with calcium to support bone and muscle physiology. And if they've ever watched my video, uh, they know it also supports ATP, the energy currency of the entire cell. So it's necessary in producing energy. And if you don't have magnesium, you're gonna be tired. But a very, very important function of magnesium is to support your arteries, okay? Especially the inner lining of the arteries called the endothelial layer. And magnesium is needed to produce certain compounds to keep the arteries at a certain tone. Magnesium is a potent vasodilator and it helps other compounds to keep the arteries soft so they don't get so stiff. Also, magnesium works with other compounds to inhibit platelet formation. So this is to avoid thrombosis or a clot. Now, since the number one cause of death in the world is heart disease, it might be a good idea to know a little bit more about magnesium. In fact, the FDA recently allowed a health claim for magnesium. So this is what they allow us to claim. Consuming diets with adequate magnesium may reduce the risk of high blood pressure, hypertension. However, the FDA has concluded that the evidence is inconsistent and inconclusive. Now, of course, they need to say that um, because there's so many other variables involved. I mean, just by taking magnesium when you're on a high carb, high sugar diet is not going to do anything. So it's extremely difficult to isolate um, the cause and effect relationship with nutrients uh, when you have so many other factors involved, especially the diet. But the point is, we know that magnesium has a huge effect on our cardiovascular system. And we also know that if we're severely deficient in magnesium, um, we get depression, apathy severe cramps and tetany of the muscle, which is that twitching, weakness, and even convulsions. So that's all really interesting. But did you also know that 66% of the population does not even get the minimum requirements of magnesium from their diet? And magnesium levels have been dropping over the last 50 years, especially in the soils, and then in the plant, and then the animals that eat the plants. Not to mention that 80% of magnesium is lost when you process foods. And if you look at all the refined foods, you'd be lucky to find any magnesium in those foods. So where do we get magnesium? Well, guess what? Magnesium is at the center of chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is that green stuff in plants. It is responsible for something called photosynthesis, where plants take light and convert it into chemical energy as fuel, carbohydrates, as in proteins, and in the photosynthesis process, the waste product is oxygen, which is not a waste for us, it's their waste, but our benefit. But the question is, how much of this chlorophyll do we actually get in our diets? Um, an average person gets about one and a half cups of vegetable per day, when we actually need a lot more, especially if we're trying to get magnesium. Now we can get magnesium from grains, but of course, it's, they're just too high in carbohydrate. So one of the best sources of magnesium is leafy greens. Anywhere we have chlorophyll. You can also get magnesium in meats, in nuts, in seeds, in seafood, and even berries. But there's not much magnesium in dairy products. Dairy products have more calcium. Now, if you're deciding to take a magnesium supplement, there are several forms that I don't recommend. One would be the oxide form. Another form I don't recommend is magnesium hydroxide as well as magnesium carbonate and magnesium sulfate. I don't recommend any of those forms. The forms that are okay would be like magnesium citrate, which is uh, easily absorbed. It's good for cramps. It's good for headaches. But one of the problems, if you take too much, it creates a laxative effect. Another form uh, of magnesium would be magnesium threonate, which is really good uh, to support your brain and cognitive functions. One of the cons of that uh, form is that it's very expensive, but that one targets the brain. Another form that I like is called magnesium bisglycinate. Now, many times people want to know, what's the difference between magnesium 
glycinate versus magnesium glycinate? Well, the answer is there is no difference. They're both the same. Now, the reason I like this form is that it's very easy to absorb. It's good for cramping. It's good to help support healthy blood sugars. It's good for stress. It's good for relaxation. It's good to help you calm down. And it doesn't have the laxative side effects that many other forms have. And the amino acid that they use to uh, formulate this compound, glycine, has its own benefit of supporting sleep, decreasing daytime sleepiness, and making you feel really relaxed. And if you want more information about that type of magnesium, I put a link down below. Then we have magnesium orotate. This one's really good for pro athletes. It improves energy, but this one is also very expensive as well. But if you're an athlete, uh, this one might be the one that you want to take. Then we have magnesium taurate. Magnesium taurate is really good if you have blood sugar issues, if you're a diabetic, uh, that's the one I would recommend. And lastly, we have magnesium malate, which is really good to support fibromyalgia. So now you know more about magnesium. Now, I think it would be appropriate for you to watch this video on calcium. Check it out.